Betrayal what? Oh, I knew the disaster was going to happen. So I smashed the bridge in advance. She has a blank look on her face. Yeah. I guess she didn't know we'd admit it so easily. I think if I just roughly put it around, she would try to pressure myself in a way that caught me off guard by finding a loophole in that excuse. Not going to happen. But, what do you want me to do? What are you going to do now that you know? Uh, I asked rather so. A draw for ego. So what? Strategy. Strategy. No, wait. She gripped her forehead as if she was having a slight headache at my calm confession. Why? Didn't you expect this answer? You didn't expect it to come out like this, did you? Professional villains are supposed to go wild. So, how did you know it was going to happen? Oh, I have to tell you that. I crossed my arms, looked her in the eye and spoke seriously. Actually, I have the ability to predict the future. I knew that and smashed the bridge in advance. Really? No. Don't believe me seeing that you believe in this. I think you're still a long way from becoming a hero who can serve one person properly. Person properly. As I smirked and said. She frowned. No, of course not. I don't know where to start. It's just a triumph of modern science. Take a short breath. My colleagues and I hacked into a Hanan group. And we found out that they were cultivating an uncontrollable giant monster in the basement of their headquarters. So, with simulation long before analysis, we analyzed the scenario where the little guy escaped. So, we all set it in advance. Smashing the bridge was just part of the one in a lot of insurance for. I set the number of cases besides that. The bridge thing happened by accident. What do you mean the number of other cases? Of course, since it was going to cross the bridge so we could only smash it down. But you mean I put them up like this, if you don't want to be treated like a prophet, honestly. It does sound almost similar to seeing the future anyway. It worked well with that excuse. She has a slightly confused look on her face. Yeah, take it. Talking about the hacking that I've done so far. Kidnapping radio waves. Transferring money to the whole nation with macro to be honest. Is it possible to get into big corporations' security and turn the simulation on? Isn't it obvious that it's possible? After thinking about my answer for a moment, she asked with a still confused expression. No, it's weird. What's so weird about it? Why do you care about that and stop other people from dying or not? You're the one playing with other civilians and terrorizing them in the first place. She glares incomprehensibly. I can just answer her like this. If that happens, the aggro will be taken away. Aggro? Attention. I mean, what are the characteristics of villains? This is all for attention. Is it called the greatest misfortune of the greatest number? In trying to give more people despair through terrorism. But will people pay attention to me if it happens? I mean, would you be interested in people who are already family, friends, and lost on to. So I just stopped it, in my calm words. She looked frustrated. Why? It's true though, in fact, when a villain causes terrorism and becomes a hot topic, no villain will cause terrorism in the next few weeks, because the amount of attention you're going to get decreases. decreases. In fact, there are statistics that the crime rate is decreasing because I have caused massive terrorism these days. So you stopped it so your aggro wouldn't be taken away. Yes, exactly. What kind of answer did you expect? Did you think I suddenly realized my goodness and woke up as a hero who goes around to save people? The truth is more boring than what you think. I just said that with a smirk. But the real truth is that it was done to save people and prevent this world from becoming a plague. But what on earth would she see me as if I told this story? She's going to figure out who I am with her unique super unique su sense. In fact, every terrorist attack I do, everything that kills other villains, is to protect the world. Actually, I don't have a hobby bothering people. I'm only doing this for her. All this is done only for the peace of the world. To prevent her misfortune, of course, I don't think she's going to deduce all this. In the first place, I seem like an outlaw who plays on the law, a terrorist who bullies the weak. Still, there's no harm in being careful in advance. 
and just as I finished speaking, the shield at the door began to rise back to the ceiling, looking up at the time. Three hours have already passed. The door finally opened. We finally escaped this awkward room. Escape. She still has a vague expression on her face. Her face. Her face. Sigh. I should say something. It's so frustrating. And whatever I do, I'm an outlaw and a terrorist who plays on the law in the first place. So I'm a villain. I'm adding that since you seem to have strange thoughts, so don't doubt me. I'm definitely a villain. I feel like you've been trying to drive me into a black hero for a while. I'm shocked. I don't think I've heard Stardust believe in the good in human nature. Why do people keep trying to whitewash me? Her expression when she heard me seemed more suspicious, so I gave up thinking. G think, ye, yeah, you'll get it once you get hit. But first of all, she stood up quietly without any particular objection to what I said. Well, first of all, what I'm saying is logical. Are you going to sit here and do more of the doubting? But how did she suddenly become interrogated and I feel like I'm making excuses? I'm just here for a power-up event. It's not how it's connected. So we kept moving forward. We didn't talk much after that. I just advanced by defeating each and every monster that pops out. No, but I don't know what's going on. It's like a hero and a villain are exploring the underground together. That's what I suggested. But it's a strange picture. She doesn't attack me because she knows I can run away immediately. Italy, Italy. I'm just watching as if I'm trying to figure out what I'm going to do. I don't want to attack her in the first place, so I don't. It's normal in the world that villain attacks heroes stupidly. But why the hell should I? That's why I continue staying awkward with her, especially. It seems to have become more awkward because of the talk in the room earlier. Sometimes she stares at me, and I'm scared. What the hell do you have in mind? I walked behind her. I never took the lead. There's a good chance that I would be attacked from behind and be taken to the bottom of the association. We attack each other or let each other go. So we are accompanied under the strange title of a temporary alliance. We handled almost every monster that was visible to us on the way. And now it feels like we're practically done. I didn't see the teleporting monster. Has it already gotten out of here? Well, that'll be handled by other heroes. I can't wait to take the behemoth and run away. No, it's not. Now before she realizes my essence with her unique hunch, maybe I should educate her about what a real villain is in the first place. Ho. Oh. Does it make sense that a hero has a villain next to him and has not doing anything? Eh, are you out of your mind or not? Anyway, that's how we got to the end. A large space deep in the basement, a broken tank there, behemoth, she murmured at the writing in front of the tank, yeah. She finally found out about the monster's name. There was no one in this space full of green, sticky things that flowed out of the tank. Of the tank. There are only a lot of broken computers and papers scattered around. I guess all the people who were studying here ran away in advance. You did a good job running away, people. Anyway, we also went to the room next to this place. The ceiling was high, and it was smaller than the water tank earlier, but it was still spacious in the middle of this room. There was something like an incubator, little black tentacles in it, sigh, finally found it, now I can just grab this and run, I can just take off a glance at Stardust, she was looking through the data at a desk in the corner without caring about me, caring, I don't like this, why aren't you paying attention to me, ah, I mean, this doesn't mean anything weird, is the hero supposed to be so defenseless with the villain next to her, a true hero should always be wary of villains, I don't know how she can trust me and let me act so freely. Why are you so fearless? I can't let her be like this. I was supposed to run away with Behemoth when she lost her attention on me. But I should teach her the bitterness of the world. With that determination, I slowly approached the incubator. It's showtime. What is this? Looking at the incubator in the middle of the spacious room, she muttered. This room at the very end of the secret lab, inside, there was a seemingly suspicious incubator, and the black tentacles in it. Perhaps this is what the Hanin group wanted to protect the most. Looking sideways, Agostic was looking at the incubator with a very interesting look. Don't touch it, I'm sending that to the association first. Ye, yeah, ye, yeah, of course. He raised his hands up while smiling as if he wasn't going to do anything. As she saw him like that, 
she remembered what happened in the room earlier. Even though he lost all his strength and was helpless, he handed her the bandage and didn't even touch her. He said he knew everything and smashed the bridge. But it wasn't really about saving people, his words, which he added in a villain. So don't doubt it. It all comes together. She became more, more clueless about Egostic. He is definitely a villain. Villain is an outlaw who plays on the law and causes terrorism against people. But why? Why does she feel like everything he says is to hide the truth of something? Why is she not really wary of him when she's next to him? Why do I keep thinking like this? She shook her head and shook off her thoughts. Off her thoughts. First, let's focus on what's in front of them. She headed to the desk in the corner of the room. There's probably information about that here. And she found out. A report on that. Her name behemoth when she was reading the explanation. Exactly. When she's off guard, from the side of Egostic, a low voice can suddenly be heard. Wake up, behemoth. The crackling sound of something can also be heard. Stardust looked back hurriedly at the sudden event. The whole situation was already over, over, over. The incubator is breaking before she knows it, and something ominous in black, wrapped around Egostic's arm. In all that confusing scene, Egostic, he was smiling quietly, looking towards Stardust. Keeping that smile on his face, he said, Miss Stardust, you know what? Betrayal is all about timing, all about timing. <laughs>